Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for December 14th, 2021. Well, yesterday, those bears kind of came back to work with some concerns about the spreading variant around the world, possible impacts. And then, of course, we have um, key inflation data today and then worries of a Fed taper. So market left us with a little bit of bearishness in the charts. But what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Um, let's take a look. First, let me um, provide a little announcement. Um, tonight, tonight, I will be doing a public e-learning session. And if you guys would like to come to that, you're more than welcome. Just come to the Hit and Run Candlesticks website. You're going to come right over here. You're going to click this free room login and come um, into the meeting this evening. It will be at 8 p.m. Eastern this evening, 8 p.m. Eastern, right from the Hit and Run Candlesticks website. You'll be able to join us. We're going to be talking about micromanagement, one of the things that seems to affect an awful lot of traders that I work with in personal coaching and the things that you can do to avoid that. How about we take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. First off, let's take a look at the Dow here. As you can see, the diamonds we had pushed, made a little push up here on Friday, trying to break that resistance to the upside and closed up there nicely. But doggone it, yesterday we reversed. So we have in this candle pattern right here, we have a little bit of concern. First off, we have what we would call a hanging man pattern at a potential price resistance in the chart, followed by a bearish pattern. And that creates a pattern that we can identify as an evening star pattern. So raises a little bit of concern in that chart with that little evening star. However, that evening star did not break down this price level of support. So we held on there yesterday. We didn't break down through that level into this gap. And I, as I've suggested um, yesterday and day before, that if we were to slip down into this gap, that's where some real selling could come in, where it could get a little bit painful if we happen to push down in there. Now, this morning we have some data, and that data could go either direction here, um, which way we, we react to it before the market open. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But certainly we do run that potential now with that evening star pattern that we're creating a lower high here in the diamonds. And just that little tiny bit of concern if we were to slip down into here that could create a little bit of a technical problem for the charts now keep in mind we're still above our 50-day moving average and it really wouldn't be out of the question at all if we were to push down and test that 50-day moving average as support so don't rule out that possibility if we get a little volatility in the market or see those bears continue to engage if we push down just a bit in the market. Let's take a look at our SPY. SPY, doggone it, we set a new record high, just squeaked out that new record high coming into Friday, and then we could not follow through with that, pushing back, leaving um, kind of an ugly little pattern here. But I gotta tell you, nothing really bad happened. Um, if you take a look at this, we have a nice little consolidating range here in the chart. And so far, um, or at least by the close yesterday, we didn't break that support. Now this morning we're seeing a little bit of bearish pressure here um, on that as we wait for that uh, PPI number. But keep a close eye on that. Remember on Friday, we had a horrible inflation number. This morning we could just, and, and we rose, we rallied. We could get an equally bad number today from PPI and just ignore it uh, the same way we have 
um, <laughs> or is the same way we did on Friday. So watch that closely. We'll want to keep a close eye on that. If we were to um, uh, fail in this area, that's where things could really get a little bit ugly if we were to drop down in here. Now keep in mind, underneath that is a 50-day moving average, but it is substantially far away. That would be a pretty substantial fall if we were to fall in that. But also keep in mind, that's really not an odd pattern to make in the market where we test a low and then we come down and maybe test it again and possibly settle a higher low. We did a very same thing over here. Notice we pushed down, rallied, pushed down, pushed down, a little higher low, and that's where we finally finished that little um, pullback in the market. So it wouldn't be out of the question for that to occur. Let's take a look at the Qs. Now the QQQ suffered some technical damage yesterday nothing major but notice right in here we did break down through that support level that I talked about yesterday and we did fall into this gap and notice we're seeing a little bit of pressure here in tech this morning a little bit of follow-through selling maybe coming in and like I said yesterday that um, one of the things that we have seen is a very select few stocks being able to hold the market up and they are lar the large techs and I said it begs the question what could happen if the techs start to sell? Well, we got a little bit of flavor of that yesterday with the techs getting a little bit of selling coming in um, and reacting negatively to this price resistance in the chart. So now we have to be a little concerned with that possibility that we could fill this gap here um, to the downside on that chart, retesting those lows. Now, keep in mind, we've got a 50-day moving average right in that area too. So we could drop down into there, test that 50 and bounce right off of it. But we'll wanna watch that closely and what we will technically have to say now at this point this creates a possible lower high at resistance. Not that it will be that or finish that way, but a possible lower high at resistance. So kind of keep that in mind. Then let's take a look at that Russell. Doggone that Russell. It is the weakest of the indexes and really has pretty ugly patterns here um, overall in the chart. Notice that we reacted negatively to the price resistance in this chart as we tried to bounce back. We've got tons of price congestion in here on this chart. We have reacted negatively to the downtrend in that chart and both of those things came together right there giving us that little bit of a double whammy of resistance in that chart. Now I've mentioned this before and that possibility that we could find some support in, as a higher low in here if we could find those buyers pushing back up in here we could catch that little higher low in that chart but what if what if we have to come all the way down and retest this low and my concern is if we come all the way back down there we may come all the way down into this area here to test this area of support. And that's gonna be critical. If we can't hold that level of support, then look out below, because there's not a whole lot of price support in this price action in the chart. So watch that closely. IWM, a little sketchy here um, on, um, on that chart. Let's take a look at the VIX that VIX. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, we have this upside trend here in the market and by golly, we ended up finding that area as a little bit of price support and we ended up pushing up a little bit here in the VIX. Now the question will be, depending on how that number, uh, how we react to that number today, whether or not we will continue that upside move or maybe we rest or if that number is completely, you know, we don't care if it's a good number, maybe we continue to sell this off and break this trend. Boy, there's just a lot of possibilities with that open this morning um, as we weigh it on that PPI number. So keep a pretty close eye on this. I think about anything is possible here. So watch that closely. But one thing we do have to say is that we did hold trend. We did hold support in that chart. And that raises that little bit of concern here overall that, that we haven't been able to break this all the way back down. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now, unfortunately, our T2122 indicator, I got to tell you, uh, well, it leaves some questions 
again in your mind. We pulled back um, pretty substantially, 300 points in the Dow yesterday, but notice, and, and the, the NASDAQ sold off hard, but notice we didn't get a whole lot of pullback in that T2122. So what that means is that today we have a pretty good open space. If the bears were to get inspired by that PPI number or worried about the the uh, new variant that's spreading around the world or worried about the FOMC taper. If those bears uh, cling on to some of those things, we still have a big um, opportunity to move down. And if yesterday was a 300 point move down, just imagine how painful that might be if we come all the way down here to test this bullish or uh, that bullish reversal zone and get into that oversold region. Now, if the bulls can find reason for um, inspiration in here. We, if we can ignore PPI and not worry about taper and not worry about uh, the new variant impacts on the economy, then we have opened up a pretty sizable upside opportunity here in um, the market as well. So keep an eye on that if we can get going bullishly here in the market. And who knows, we had a horrible inflationary number on Friday and we just said, wow, we don't care, we wanna go up and we completely ignored it and went higher. So potentially we could get a really bad PPI number and just not care and rally to the upside. Let's take a look at our T2108. Now I gotta tell you guys, this is not encouraging here for the market. Like I've mentioned before, we were setting new record highs in this market up here and up here and up here. Notice we set a new record high in the SPY when we were here. Pretty amazing to tell you the truth. And when you look at this chart, we only have 27, 28% of our stocks above their 40 day moving average. That's not a bullish case for the market. Um, the internals that we're seeing here are not all that good. Now, of course, 40 day moving average can be recovered pretty quickly, but let's notice in this chart, if we were to pull this back, there's an awful lot of price resistance in this chart right through this area. So we needed some substantial energy to get that moving to improve that situation in the chart. If those bears are to engage and we were to push down, you can see we've got some support down in here and we could even go lower here in that chart if that support gives up. So pretty darn ugly, just be really, really careful. If we take a look at our T2107, this is the percentage of stocks holding above their 200 day moving average. And I gotta tell you, this does not provide us a bullish case. And once again, we set new record highs in the SPY with our number down here around just 40% of our stocks above their 200 day moving average. That means that we had a very select few holding the market up and that's that tech sector. And right now we're seeing that tech sector getting a little bit of bearishness. Now I can't say that it will follow through with bearishness to the downside, but with this much weight pulling us down, if tech starts to slip, we could see some substantial selling. So keep in mind, we continue to move in this downtrend. We reacted negatively to price resistance in that chart and um, only 37% of our stocks holding above their 200 day moving average means there's an awful lot of downside weight tugging heavily on the market. So let's hope those, those QQQs um, are able to um, maintain that bullish energy and just keep that buy, buy, buy going, um, even though their elevations are just extremely stretched out. Let's take a look at our T2101. Now, T2101 is the absolute market breadth. And notice that the absolute market breadth, we have been going in this big wedging pattern to the downside for a long, long time. We shot up in this fear of the new variant. And unfortunately, we haven't been able to give that back up yet. So notice we're holding above some support levels in the chart. And what I've mentioned before is where we could really get some ugly selling coming into the market if we were to hold these higher lows in that absolute breadth and then re-engage the those bears and we could see that uh, begin to spike back up. So watch that carefully, but there's no reason to believe that they're just gonna come flying back in. The, the, the bulls have been 
really, really resilient. So let's watch this closely. We could, if we ignore a bad number in PPI or if the PPI number comes in better than expected, we could certainly see this continue to drift lower and that would help us out here um, for the help out the bullish case here in the market. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now our economic calendar has, um, as you know, a couple things that we're going to want to be paying attention to here. Um, today we're going to have that PPI. So watch that closely on that PPI number. Now, according to EconoDay consensus, they're looking for that PPI number to decline just slightly on the headline. Month over month, they're looking from a 0.6 to a 0.5. But year over year, they're looking for an increase from 0.5. 8.6 to 9.2 that could be a problem for us here in the market so let's watch that closely x food and energy they're looking for an increase there as well with everything else kind of holding in there flat so watch that closely if this number were to come in hotter than expected like it did on cpi well, we could see those bears re, um, engage on that this time. It's also possible that those bulls just, just say, we don't care about inflation again, and continue to try and um, rally the market. So watch that close. And then as you're planning forward, boy, keep in mind, tomorrow's gonna be a big day. We've got retail sales, Empower State, import export prices, business inventories, housing market index, the petroleum status, and then we get the Mac Daddy of the day. We get that FOMC announcement where they're planning to double down on their taper. They will probably make comments about increasing the pace um, of interest rates, possibly um, one uh, up to two, I guess, in 2022. So keep a close eye on that. That could have major ramifications for the market as well. Um, after that, we'll have the Treasury International Capital. I don't think anybody will care about that. So just watch that closely and prepare. Tomorrow could be pretty wild. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar. Now our earnings calendar, we've got 15 companies on the earnings calendar. We've got only a very few that are verified. And I have to tell you that um, of those that are verified, not a lot of particularly notable uh, charts to pay attention to. Um, the two charts that I did pull out, ASPU will be reporting today. Again, here we go, ASPU. A $2.73 stock, not exactly the kind of stock that's going to move the market around. And CLSK um, is probably the more notable of the day. Um, but again, um, not exactly something to move the market around substantially today. So keep that in mind. So with that, everyone, how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But let's also keep in mind that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. And before we do that, if you could do me a quick favor, if this is the first time you have seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on youtube also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i post a video click those thumbs up buttons and leave a brief comment if you feel the video was worthy worthy remember i don't get up every morning at 5 a.m to put these videos out for um <sighs> you know, for hype or prediction or anything like that. What I want to do is truly help everyone look at the technicals of the chart and be able to look at the chart for what it is, not for what you want it to be. And if you guys find that helpful and continue to support the channel, it helps us to continue to grow. And I truly, truly appreciate it. So let's take a look at these stocks that could be setting up. And remember, guys, do not rush into the market first thing in the morning there are some concerns out here that we have to be worried about and make sure that you understand each and every one of these trades specifically and you are not chasing or um, following blindly someone else's trade ideas. First off, let's take a look at Ford. Now Ford, I've been mentioning Ford, and I, I mentioned on, fr um, on Friday when this popped out, 
don't chase that trade let's wait and see if it can hold support so keep an eye on this chart now that we've broken through this resistance here in the chart we're getting this pullback let's see if we can hold right in here and see if we can find some of those buyers to step up and perk up maybe hold this little tiny trend that we have here in the chart and see if Ford can get moving to the upside so I would keep an eye on that that's a nice looking chart that could set up and by the way I would not rule out the possibility that this may have to rest here for a little while if it can hold that support level with the uncertainty that we see in the market um, in the next couple of days one of the things I have to point out for long guys for long trade ideas is there was a huge a huge rotation into um, safety trades yesterday take a look at GIS GIS General Mills breaking through some resistance in the chart these are old boring dividend payers that did extremely well yesterday there was a massive rotation into safety so keep an eye on that a lot of this going on take a look coke had a huge surge yesterday breaking through some resistance levels in the chart i really i would not want to chase this but any rest or pullback would set up an opportunity take a look at pepsico oh my goodness just continuing to run to the upside we've been talking about this after this breakout right in here and it just continues to work to the upside pepsico another defensive sector stock we also st saw stocks like um, constellation brands moving up yesterday trying to break through some resistance to the upside um, in the chart we saw some places in like mkc um, uh, McCormick moving up strongly yesterday food products moving up we saw Tyson Tyson trying to break through some resistance and move to the upside we saw Hormel stretching out an unbelievable stretch out move to the upside we saw Kroger another defensive sector stock gaining some energy here yesterday moving to the upside so old boring stocks that pay dividends did a tremendous job yesterday that's a place you may want to look and we also saw utilities stretching to the upside yesterday that's not something you would typically see in a truly bullish market seeing boring stocks like utilities stretching to the upside so keep a close eye on that as we test resistance in this chart and some of these defensive sector stocks coming up at the same time as you guys remember i had mentioned iwm as a potential short that kind of worked out i mentioned um, amd as a potential short that broke support in this chart you can see breaking down in resistance and trend moving on down and i suspect we could come down into this area for that potential short it may be a wise idea to take a look this is kind of a, a big one um, to short unless you use put options but notice that tesla could be failing a major support level here in the chart we heard about um, um, Elon Musk selling another almost another billion dollars um, worth of stock here so let's watch that carefully as it pulls back we could slip down into this next level of price support which is substantially lower here as you can see in price so a few short trades out there to be made aware of another place that I have just a little bit of concern here guys and I'm sorry I'm running this just a little bit long is if we take a look at our financials take a look at XLF XLF has the classic failure pattern here breaking below its 50-day rallying up and we're starting to fail at that 50-day moving average that would suggest that possibility of a test down here at the 200 day not a good sign for the market and the same thing if we take a look at energy xle is running into a little bit of problem here and notice that potential here that we could fail there was news out today uh, worries that the new variant could put um, some dents into the rally in energy and as we push we broke that 50 we rallied back up and recovered it but we were not able to hold it and that possibility that we could start seeking a 200 day moving average in that chart so watch that carefully and closely there are a few things out there showing 
um, those the flagging those little bearish um, signs in the market that we're going to have to be careful of. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. And I hope if you get a chance, I will see you tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, over in the trading room for that public e-learning session. If you get a chance to make it, love to see you there. Y'all take care. Be safe. Have an awesome day. We'll see you right back here.